as property owners shouldn't have to know how fast they need to turn in order to not be loud. We should be able to trust that what is presented is what is delivered. Um, and that's really unfortunate that that's not been the case. Um, for myself, day to day, during the day, I'm pretty busy. I'm doing different things that, so I don't hear the wind turbines. But for myself at night, if I go to bed and I'm woken up once, twice, three times by the sound that just reverberates through my bedroom, then, then that's really, that's a huge loss. That's something that you can't really put a value on and I'm not looking to. I'm not looking to uh, live anywhere else than where I live. I love my home. I want to be able to live there and I want to be able to be at peace there. And it's not like a throughway. It's not like any other noise. And you can't say you know what it's like unless you live near one. The people who come to visit up there and they say, well, oh, God, geez, I want to f see with this noise for myself. And they come up and then they write glowingly about what the gentle massaging sound <laughs> of, the, of these lovely windmills. And, you know, as someone said earlier, they're very different, different winds. And you can't get the feeling in a two-minute visit and, you know, sort of walking by. you got to live with it 24-7. Um, you know, Aaron was talking about waking up in the middle of the night. I, I woke up the, in the middle of the night with a throbbing headache, and I went up to get an aspirin, and I realized that throb wasn't from me. That was that low frequency coming through the walls, and it was like echoing inside my head. Mm -hmm. It was just, it, it's an insidious crazy kind of it's a it's a sound that will uh, fluctuate on the wind you'll get um, steady pulses for a few seconds and then maybe it'll dissipate and then it'll come back at you louder and it's really it's really um, it's remarkably disturbing because you can't ever really anticipate it it's very different from industrial sounds from processing plants where there's a steady mechanical hum it's a <laughs> it'd be like your neighbor with a, a bullhorn every few seconds shouting at you and then being really quiet and then shouting at you. If you're ever visiting the site of wind turbines, you know, whether it's two, two, one, you know, however many or 20, go to that site and say, would I buy a piece of property here? Most people would probably say no. Would they maybe stay at a motel near a wind turbine site? Probably, because it's not an issue in the short term. But would you invest? Would you live near them? I don't think, I think that most people would answer in the negative um, if given the opportunity. And, and they really did evaluate. Standards that were developed and which are being applied to wooden turbines were developed basically for industrial sounds within urban settings. That's totally in, inappropriate, as is recognized by these other um, um, sets of regulations, whether they be federal, state, or um, or municipal or or, or town regulations um, that are designed for thinking about how do you deal with this in a quiet rural setting? How do you how do you develop? How do you deal with these low frequencies? How do you all these things aren't measured? And um, so again, it's not just the technology of of. Uh, of, of the windmills themselves, it's also the technology of measurement and what I'd like to call sort of the, the legal and regulatory technology that addresses the very specific understanding of what the noise comes from and how it affects people. I'm really thankful for the days when the turbines are off. Mm. I love it and I am <laughs> thankful for the things that I took for granted before. I'm thankful for the quiet, the relative quiet in other parts of the island. And I just didn't realize that that was something that had always been there, it had always been a gift until it was gone. So I'm aware that it's, um, it's not a neighborhood issue, it's a community issue. And we, we, all, we all voted on this and we all were excited about it. And, um, and I've been encouraged, like David was mentioning, about neighbors who are saying, uh, you know, it's not right. That's been the biggest thing that's given me hope is that people who can't hear them are still feeling like it affects me because it affects my community. I've had conversations with the two people that own the land that 
is least for this project to occur. And um, one of the two of them told me in conversation, he said, um, I feel misled. He said, I feel as though all the information, you know, he didn't, that's what he said. I, he said, I feel misled and I think we need to hold GE accountable because um, the information that was presented to us came directly from GE. I do feel that the representation in the press so far has been unfortunate because um, we are being very effectively used as a community model for why this is such a good idea. And that's really distressing to me that the promoters of this project that are not the people that live on this island, but the people beyond this island that are promoting wind power on the coast of Maine are still using the Vinyl Haven example as a positive example. They're still using those like 90% approval ratings. And there should be a new poll conducted with people on the island and, and use those numbers to see just how many people still support it as passionately. To continue promoting um, industrial wind projects within close proximity of existing human residences is irresponsible. And I feel very strongly about that. But let's not put it in someone's neighborhood, because certainly a thousand feet next to the turbines, to say that you can have them a thousand feet away from a home is ridiculous. And I think that the, um, the state regulators need to take a really good look at this, um, because it's irresponsible. Um, I mean, there was a time when I think their perception was the problem was the people who were complaining. <laughs> Yeah. I think we've gotten beyond that. I, I think hope. we're moving towards people acknowledge the problem is the noise from the turbines. That's huge. If that $15 million was invested into this community uh, in a different way so that each individual living on these islands was given $10,000 that they could then spend on home improvements and energy saving appliances, we would be in a spot where we could have uh, hired people, there would have been actual work created on this island, and people would be left with a tangible physical benefit for their homes. Um, the noise does uh, rock you back on your feet and really make you wonder, um, you know, what are the trade-offs, you know, is it worth it, can I stay in my home? Um, so anyways, uh, we definitely, we don't want to sell and we just hope very much that um, we're going to be able to find some solutions to this.